Welcome, my brothers and sisters, to a very special miracle of the Eucharist in a little town in the eastern part of France called Blano. It's not on the map, and it's very difficult to find, but the gift the Lord gave us as we arrived at this church was almost as great as the miracle of the Eucharist he gave us here. As we came off the buses, we could hear the pealing of the bells of the church welcoming us, pilgrims from the United States, to come and venerate our Lord Jesus in this miracle of the Eucharist. Dear family, we are so excited to be in Blano, France, in the Côte d'Or, the Bourgogne section, where we have a very special miracle of the Eucharist that we want to share with you here. We have with us Curé Cunier, who is the curé of 10 churches in this area, uh, <coughs> 10 villages in the area. Ten parishes. 10 parishes, and he is the, also the custodian of this shrine of the miracle of the Eucharist that we have here in Blano. I cannot tell you how stirring this is for us, how touched we are. Uh, our dear friend has gone to heaven, and he was the curé here, and his desire had been for us to make this program, and now he's watching us from heaven, I know. And when we came here to hear the bells pealing, I just thought it was the hour. And because I believe we're at that, yes, it is the, the hour of the Angelus, but the curate advises us that he was greeting us, the American people, the American people, people from, from on pilgrimage. We are the Roman Catholic Church of the United States that is, has, is being greeted. So when you heard those bells, those bells were for you, family, and for this time to share with the curé and with this beautiful, spirit-filled community who have done a great deal to get this church ready for us. I know this church well, and they have done a great deal to get it prepared. And we thank you, dear Jesus, that we are part of this one universal Roman Catholic Church. Uh, curé, voulez-vous uh, dire uh, un, uh, quelque chose, quelque chose à, à le peuple des États-Unis? Un mot de bienvenue et de reconnaissance pour l'amitié qui nous unit et la foi en Jésus le Christ mm -hmm. vivant aujourd'hui, oui, oui. Sauveur du monde. Father welcomes you uh, and is happy that you are here. <coughs> this is a very this is church. This is church of the world gathering together under the name of Christ, the faith of our community as we all gather here to worship our Lord Jesus. Uh, he shares that this, these people are the community of Blano. These are the people that take care of this church. It is a mission church now because the uh, custodian, the original pastor whom we knew has lived passed here. on, who lived here. He was the resident pastor. He lived here. Father is in charge of 10 and uh, some of the priests in charge of 20 different parishes throughout the area. And so uh, they, re they, they rely on the community to take care mm -hmm. of the church, and then they come in, celebrate Mass. But they are one church, une église, une église together, following in the words of our Lord Jesus. And, and if I understand correctly, <coughs> uh, the curé is saying that they are helping to perpetuate this sign, to keep this sign alive, because... Uh, it's not past history. It is just as we believe and we say he was, he is, and he ever will be. And this is what this sign is. It is a sign of the 14th century. It is a sign of the 20th century. It is the hope of the 21st century. And our priest has said, this sign is a sign, this miracle 
is here to bring us to the reality of the true miracle that happens all the time and that exists in our church, right? And that is that our Lord is alive, vivant. Our Lord is alive and he is present on the altar at time of consecration. He is present in the tabernacle. He is present for us to adore in our monstrances, in our very own church. No more a miracle than this. But here, our Lord Jesus has brought about this miracle to let you know how important it is to him that you have no doubt that he is alive and he is with us. He kept his promise. He is keeping his promise. We are not orphans. We are not alone. We're not helpless. We're not hopeless. We would like to bring you back to the year 1331, to Blano, France, to Easter Sunday. Mm. Remember, we shared with you, it was very cold here. The spring had not really taken hold, and we still had the chill of winter in us. But on this morning, this Easter morning, as all the parishioners filed in for early morning mass, it was the end of Lent. Yes. We, we could now say, Alleluia. After 40 days of not being able to say hallelujah in our church. And so our parishioners, while they were cold and tired and the will, the chill blew through the church, they were so happy to be able to celebrate once more the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. You, you know, in your own church, I know the, the terrible feeling that I have on Good Friday. When our church no longer feels like a church, but more like a building. Oh, all the exterior is there, but the heart has been taken out. The tabernacle is emptied. It's open up. There's nothing inside. It becomes a building. And it's a terrible time for us, a time of emptiness and a time of mourning. He is not here with us. He is not with us. And you share at that moment, haven't you, that feeling that the apostles, that a blessed mother, that the disciples had, he is no longer with us. He is gone. And that's why at that, when the lights come back into the darkened church and we're at the vigil mass and we, for the first time in 40 days, can shout, Alleluia, he is risen. This is the feeling that permeated this church. Suddenly, the Lord was with them once again. So on that morning, Easter morning, 1331, the celebrant, Curé U de Bon, U de Bon. Uh, bon, uh, B-A-U, how would you pronounce that? Bon, bon. Comment bon. dit U, Uga de Bon. <laughs> and it's really important that we pronounce it correctly. In English, we would pronounce it U de Bon, but Uga de Bon. Okay. Bon. And that's how they... Bon. 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 Okay. <laughs> Okay, we've got to get beyond that. We've got to get beyond the name. Our priest that morning was so excited about the Mass that he was celebrating for the people of the parish of Blano that when the time came for him to consecrate the host, you could feel the warmth come into the church, the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. They were no longer cold. Now, all the parishioners came up, filed up, to receive and, the Eucharist. And they knelt at the altar rail in anticipation of their Lord uniting with them, commingling with them, becoming one with them. And one lady, and I know I've done it myself, uh, trying to be very careful that, our, that the host, that our Lord would not fall, when she received our, the host, instead of just receiving on the tongue, and that she bit down to be sure she was afraid. Evidently, maybe it was at the tip of the tongue she was afraid. She bit down, and a fragment broke off and plummeted into the air. And thank you, dear Jesus, the young altar boy. The altar sir? Yeah. Caught it in Nepal. Now, the name of the woman, should I bother with it? The name of the woman? Uh, Madame de Four? Oui, oui. Oui, oui Madame de Four. Comment? Madame Defour. Madame Defour. Madame Defour was the lady who received the Eucharist, and the young altar boy caught the small particle of the host in his paw, 
But the priest never saw this. And he continued to give communion to the rest of the community. And when he was finished, our altar boy said, Father, there's a bit of the host here. But as he turned to look at it, it had become a drop of blood. And it, it was a little mound. It wasn't a stain. It was a mound. It was three-dimensional. So he took the, the palm and went into the back and with pure water, you know we use pure water to clean the, the, the vessels, right? Okay, with pure water, he started to clean the palm. And although as the water would fall on the palm, it became bloody, it would not wash off. Instead, it spread on the palm. So finally, our priest, after he realized that the Lord did not want this to go away, that this was indeed a miracle that he was giving the people of the... You've got to understand, he was shocked. He was in complete shock when this happened. What is happening here? Okay, what do I do? I wash it. And then he realized, no, that's not what the Lord wants me to do. He doesn't want me to wash it. He wants me to show it to the people. And so he took, he cut the pole where the, the, the blood stain was, and he brought it out and showed it to the people. And none of the people had left the church. I want you to know that no one left the church because they were aware that a miracle had taken place, and they were not about to leave until they saw what happened to the palm. Imagine, imagine in this little remote village. You have to remember that the church was in crisis again, people. It was before the, the revolution, but something that had begun in the 13th century of Berengarianism had spread all over Europe, and the effects had not been resolved, even with his proclamation of obedience. That did not end it. So very often, we do something, we do harm, that they say lives after us. And as and we mentioned to you when we were in Carcassonne, Albigensianism also had taken a stronghold in France, came from southern France, worked its way up. It was very, very strong at this time. This was almost at the very beginning of it. So they were fighting heresies, denying the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. And here the Lord gives us a miracle saying, yes, I am with you always. And we don't know at that time who the miracle was for. This is a little village, but even in this tiny village, devotion had just kind of very few people were coming. And you know, if we are not affirming and supporting our priests, how do we expect them to get up each day and serve us, their spouse, faithfully? so difficult, it's so lonely. And I wonder if this, this dear priest on this day looked at them before this happened and said, yes, the church is filled, it's Easter, like our church is here at home, right? They're filled on Easter, they're filled at Christmas time, but oh, where will they be? Tomorrow morning. Or even next Sunday, where will they be? Was he thinking of that? And was his Lord saying to him, son, keep on, be faithful. Keep it up. You're a faithful, faithful son. Maybe that's what the miracle was for. Maybe it was for the little priest who had been working in this vineyard for years and years. Nobody ever paid any attention to him. Maybe it was to renew the church. It did here. Uh, the bishop sent representatives uh, about two weeks after Easter to the church to verify the miracle of the Eucharist. They did indeed verify that we had a miracle of the Eucharist, and they allowed the church to keep it here in the church. And so veneration began almost immediately. This became a strong pilgrim place, especially around the Feast of Corpus Christi, and then on Easter, People from all over the area, all over the valley of the Côte d'Or and the Burgundy area came to this shrine. You could see processions of young people coming to this shrine, venerating the miracle of the Eucharist of Blano. 500 years later, in 1830, the Bishop Alphon not only once again uh, authenticated, verified that this is truly a miracle of the Eucharist, but 
he bestowed plenary indulgences on those who came here and adored our Lord truly present in this miracle. Now, as we know, according to St. Thomas Aquinas, and we have told you this before, that when, our, when the host has miraculously changed, has taken a, a miraculous form, our Lord is truly present. We also believe that as long as he is in his original form, that is, has the consistency of an unleavened host, the starch that is necessary, then our Lord again is, as, is, as in Siena, where he appears in the same form that we receive him, he is forever present until that host should decompose. Whereas at that moment, then our Lord leaves. So when we are here adoring this miracle, we are adoring our Lord no less or no more than we do in our church, present in the monstrance, presence on, on the altar. We thank you, Curé. We thank you, Mon Curé, and la comunità, the community of Blano. We are going to ask our priests to come and show us the miracle of the Eucharist and pray with us here. We thank you for the gift of being with us here. We thank you for allowing us to mm. share this miracle of the Eucharist with all the people in the United States. I would like to uh, just have the young man who speaks English just tell us a little bit about the life here. Well, my name is Eric Lelus, but the point is uh, uh, I grew up here, but Good. in fact, I live in Paris. So um, I don't have a concrete idea of the life here. Uh, so uh, I can tell you that that is the, the back of beyond of France. Uh, I mean, uh, it's a very small village. Mm -hmm. um, this is all the more true as uh, there is no school now. Mm -hmm. In this village? In this village, there is no school. So. Um, uh, unfortunately, uh, this village uh, is not really known to the public. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm really astonished that uh, American people knew this miracle because it's really uh, uh, a small thing uh, um, for French people. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm really um, convinced that uh, an overwhelming majority of French um, doesn't know that this miracle. Mm -hmm. So it's really... Um, um, exciting that uh, uh, people here uh, came from uh, um, come from a state, the state, mm -hmm. and they know they they heard about this uh, this miracle. Mm. What you're speaking of, and I, I I hear the edge of sadness, if I may say that, uh, is what we suffer also. Are we? truly aware that our Lord is present in our church? A Protestant once said, if he believed that Jesus was really present, body, blood, soul, and divinity, he would crawl to church. A little girl in China, when, three ho when 30 hosts were thrown on the altar by communists, crawled to that altar each day and picked a host up with her tongue and consumed it. And on the last day, the last <coughs> host was her viaticum. She was shot right there on the altar. Do we... Do we understand the gift that we have? Do we take it for granted? And, and I'm afraid that not only our brothers and sisters here in France do, but we in the United States do as well. I thought, let us find out what keeps them going? It's so obvious that they lovingly care for the church and for the miracle. What gives them the, the strength to keep on uh, keeping this alive when so few people come here? Well, in yes. fact, she is really happy to be here. Uh, uh, because uh, uh, last year, uh, she couldn't have the opportunity to come here. She was out, and uh, now uh, she's, uh, well, in fact, she's uh, 
Mais en tous les cas, nous sommes très, très contents de vous avoir mm -hmm. Parce que vous êtes très sympathique, uh, très gentil. Et nous vous aimons. Je suis, je suis très contente d'être ici pour vous accueillir. Parce que vous avez accueilli l'année dernière last year with her également husband. avec mon mari. Unfortunately, her husband is ill. So he have the opportunity to come again, and she she hope that you can come again. Merci beaucoup, Lord. You tell us that the sacrifice of the mass is the ongoing sacrifice of the cross, and here you manifest that, don't you, my Lord, with your blood shed once more. And so, Lord. Help us never to be apathetic bystanders at the ongoing sacrifice of the cross, but to be active participants, seeing you being raised on the cross as our priest raises you in consecration <clears throat> and crying out once more, Lord, just absorb me into your sacred heart that I may be truly changed, and through that change, the world might get to know you. We love you, Jesus. It happened at Easter time. Our Lord had died on the cross and he had risen. But our Lord does not want us to forget the price that was paid and the price that is being paid by one martyr after the other of this holy church. It happened again today, didn't it, Daddy? Yes, my love. We have never expected or experienced the reaction of the pilgrims to this miracle of the Eucharist. They went down on their knees, they began to sob. Oh, Lord Jesus in the Eucharist, the, the, the devotion, the reverence to, to this miracle of the Eucharist was overpowering. What did they see? Did they see a miracle? 
Or did they once again, the way the pilgrims from the Marian Eucharistic Conference at Lanciano, did they once again see their crucified Lord bleeding up on the cross? What will you see this next Mass when the sacrifice of the Mass takes place on the altar of sacrifice? Will you see our Lord crucified? Write us at the address on our screen or call us in the United States at 1-800-633-2484. We love you.